I will derive the molecular term symbols for B2 today. Uh, first, let's look at the molecular orbital diagram of B2. A uh, boron has three valence electrons, two S electrons, two P electron. You have two boron atoms, so there are two P electrons. The P orbitals can form uh, two degenerate one pi U orbitals. 3 sigma g here, 1 pi g star, and 3 sigma u star. Uh, we'll just look at those two degenerate orbitals. When you put two electrons in two degenerate orbitals, there are six microstates. And we will group these six microstates into molecular terms. But first, let's visualize this 1 pi u orbital. We're looking at the 1 pi u orbital made of two py orbitals. So this is a py orbital, another py orbital here. They are centered at the nucleus with plus five charges in the nucleus of boron. And let's say this is the z direction. And if, if we are talking about the atomic orbitals, the p orbitals has L equals 1 and M sub L equals minus 1, 0, and 1. Same here. Alright, but uh, again, when we're talking about a atomic orbital, such as the 2p orbital in an atom, the electron can rotate about the nucleus in three different directions. It can rotate about the x-axis, y-axis, and z-axis. It is called three-dimensional rotation. And in a three-dimensional rotation, again, m sub l can be from negative l to positive l. However, in this situation, when we look at this pi orbital, can this pi orbital rotate about the z-axis? Yes, this pi orbital can rotate freely about the z-axis. But can this orbital rotate about the y-axis? There's no way. If we rotate this pi orbital this way, these two p orbitals will no longer be centered at the nucleus. That's unphysical. And again, there's another axis here, the x-axis. Can this pi orbital rotate about the x-axis? Again, no way. It's because if we rotate this about the x-axis, the pi orbital, again, is composed of two p orbitals. If we rotate this one about the x-axis, this p orbital will be rotated to here. Again, it's no longer centered at the nucleus, and that's unphysical. So this one PU orbital can only rotate about the z-axis, and we say this is a two-dimensional rotation. And we have learned this for a two-dimensional rotation this m sub l can only be plus minus l. l is the total angular momentum quantum number. m sub l is the z component of the total angular momentum. Similarly, we have this equation, except we use lowercase l, lowercase m sub l for single electrons. We use uppercase l and uppercase m sub l for a group of electrons in an atom. We use Greek letters such as lambda for molecular term symbols. And this equation is very important. Again, when we are talking about this molecular term symbols, we're looking at the pi orbitals, not a p orbital. This is a pi orbital. It can only rotate about the z-axis, but not about the x or y axis. That's why it's a two-dimensional rotation and m sub lambda can only be plus minus lambda. 
All right, and then we can just uh, fill out this table here for B2. And let's say uh, over here, uh, we have quantum number M lambda here for uh, this orbital is let's say one. We have two electrons here. So we put uh, two electrons here. That means this is two. And then we have two electrons in this orbital with each with a Z component of negative one. So minus two. And over here, plus one minus one, that's zero. Plus one minus one, zero. Plus one minus one, zero. Plus minus one, zero. Again, we're talking about the uh, orbital angular momentum. And it's actually the Z component of the orbital angular momentum. All right, six microstates. And then we look at the spin alpha beta, that's zero, alpha beta, zero. Alpha alpha, one. Alpha beta, zero. Beta beta, negative one. Beta alpha, zero. All right, so now we'll be able to group this six microstates into three molecular terms. First two lo rows, m lambda can be negative two, positive two. We'll look at this equation. m lambda is plus minus lambda, or plus minus two. That means lambda is simply two. How about the spin number? Zero, zero. S can only be zero here. This one, m m sub lambda can only be zero, so lambda is zero. S can be negative one, zero, and one. It's a triplet, and S equals one here. And then finally, this m lambda is zero. That indicates that lambda has to be zero. And m sub S is zero. That indicates S has to be zero. Uh, again, we we'll just recall in general chemistry, we learned that uh, the orbital angular momentum number is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56, 57, 58, 59, 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79, 80, 81, 82, 83, 84, 85, 86, 87, 88, 89, 90, 91, 92, 93, 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, 99, 100, 101, 102, 103, 104, 105, 106, 107, 108, 109, 110, 111, 112, 113, 114, 115, 116, 117, 118, 119, 120, 121, 122, 123, 124, 125, 126, 127, 128, 129, 130, 131, 132, 133, 134, 135, 136, 137, 138, 139, 140, 141, 142, 143, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 150, 3 sigma and 1 sigma. And which one has the lowest energy? We first look for the largest S value, therefore, 3 sigma has the lowest energy. If you want to see another example about oxygen 2 or see a more rigorous explanation about determining the molecular term symbols for diatomic molecules. Uh, here's the paper, Journal of Chemical Education, 2018, volume 95, page numbers 1682 to 1683. It's a short paper. Thank you.